Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here. And today we are finally getting to go over the turbo that I had every intention of running on the truck with the uh, GT4088 style from Turbo Labs America. So please, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and show you some support for the channel. We really, really do appreciate it. And with all that being said, let's finally get to this video, guys. A lot of you guys have asked about this turbo and continue to ask about this turbo. And I told you I'd try to figure out what was wrong. Uh, the first thing I want to say is, oh, I want to show you some stuff. So this was a new center bearing housing. Obviously now it's dirty, but as you can see, spins freely. Here is the unison ring and this moves freely. Everything in here looks really good. Um, so there's that. Again, no issues, not a lot of resistance to move it. Same here with this thing. This doesn't take a lot to move it. I won't push too much out because every time I do that, it pushes oil out of the system. So now, obviously I have this all apart. This was a remanufactured exhaust housing uh, that, I mean, the company I bought this off eBay for did a great job. It's cleaned up. It's, you know, it looked all but brand new. Uh, billet wheel that came with this setup. Yes, I know I could run that in my um, In my power max. However, I've chosen not to for the time being so All that's left is to start really taking this uh, to take this cover off what I think is happening here um, I don't think I need light for this what I think is happening if you can see here I don't believe the backing plate is clearing the uh, VGT plunger. Okay guys, so when you take the backing plate off, this is what you're left with here. There is an O-ring in here. Um, this all looks good. Uh, here's the 360 thrust washer. Uh, I just had that off a second ago. It looks fine, nothing to be concerned about there. Here's the backing plate, and I just kind of wiped some stuff off of it. And what I wiped off of it, you can see there's a little there's some scuff marks here. So what I think was happening is I don't believe this was allowed to uh, mate against this surface entirely. I believe this is where I was having issues. Uh, again, no oil was getting out, but it's the only thing I can think of that would cause it to not boost at all. My VGT veins are working as they're as, as expected as they should. Um, new center bearing housing didn't seem to be an exhaust leak um i couldn't feel anything around here as you can as you guys can tell in two spots i needed to machine here um let's see here what did he did this one here and then i came back he clocked it incorrectly um there so i believe what we're dealing with here is he didn't remove enough material from this backing plate to uh for it to clear enough of this to actually seat as it's supposed to so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get this cleaned up we're going to take it down to my bench grinder yeah i know it's not very precise but as you guys can see it's not like he's working with a, a precision tool here himself i am a little shocked that that wasn't enough to clear it but um, well, we're gonna go. We're gonna go attempt to fix it. Greg over at DNA Services provided. I feel confident that I fixed this. Is going to actually put this on his truck and see if it works, guys. So uh, I'm kind of done goofing out turbos for a little bit. Um, not goofing around them. This is kind of fun to me messing around with these. But what I am done with is pulling them on and off of my own personal truck when I need my truck to be running. Because uh, don't worry, guys. We're there's more uh, turbos coming to my truck um, down the road. We're not going to talk about that right now. But uh, my truck has not seen is not going to see its last turbo quite yet. I still have some big plans for it. So anyway, guys, I'm going to get set up. Uh, I'm not working with a precision setup like I kind of said earlier. Um, you know, it works. Uh, it was never. I never intended on having to do this. So. Uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, I'll get back to you. Okay, guys, so here you can see this is the back side of the backing plate. So this faces 
the center bearing housing. And you can see here, I have carved out a nice chunk here. Um, again, it is by no means perfect, um, but what I did notice is now it definitely does clear this housing. And I think that that was the issue I was running into was that it didn't actually clear the housing. Now, I don't believe it was bad. I don't believe it caused any damage. The wheel looks fine. There doesn't seem to be any issues with the uh, turbine shaft poking out there. There's no heat marks, nothing that would lead me to believe that there's been damage caused to this setup. So I think what was happening was I was thinking that I think there was a, I'm not even 100% sure, it would, it would boost about 24 PSI, but it would take forever to get there. So I'm not quite sure what was happening. So I do believe this was the issue, guys. Um, you know, I bought one of his earlier kits. I don't know if it was just working the kinks out. So I'm going to get this. All you do, guys, see that O-ring is intact. There doesn't seem to be any issues. There's obviously plenty of oil on it now. I'm going to just set this down on it. Harder to do with one hand and be gentle with everything. Um, and I mean, I can tell like it definitely was hitting before. Whether that fixed all my issues, that I don't know. We'll have to see how this turns out once I get this all bolted back up and Greg gets it back on his or get Greg gets it on his truck. Um, so we'll go from there. But um, anyway, guys, this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna bolt this back up, uh, get this center, get this bottom piece back on. I am going to do a video on how to rebuild a turbo using my old one. I have no intention of using this turbo anymore. Um, I might have plans for that exhaust housing yet though. Don't quote me on that, but I might have plans for that. Um, there's a little bit of damage in here, but with what I am thinking, that'll probably end up being machined out. Anyway, guys, don't want to give you too much info on what might happen here, and it might not even be on my truck, but I do believe I'm going to use this for something uh, down the road, but you guys probably won't know about that for a bit. Now, back to this guy. I'm going to get four bolts in here. Uh, the kit I bought from KC Turbo, they came with. Uh, they go in. I don't have torque specs for them or anything. I just, uh, you know, make sure they're in there uh, and tighten them down and they weren't loosened up or anything from when I initially put this in. They were actually, they were a little bit of pain in the butt to get off. So I think I am good there. Anyway, guys, I will get back to you here once I have this turbo all put back together. I will show you, um, you know, most guys are only going to do the compressor side of this. So I'm not going to show, uh, you know, the full rebuild on this. Cause like I said, I do have a video I'm planning on doing to show that. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, guys, I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bolt these four things down. I don't have my tripod today. I don't know where the heck, it's somewhere in the house or in the truck. Um, I'm gonna try to find it for the end of the video, but I think it's pretty explanatory about bolting these four things down. I just got a little, uh, quarter inch drive here, five sixteenths is what came in Charlie's kit. Um, so gonna get these all tightened down. I'm gonna do an X pattern, uh, this corner, that corner. I'm gonna go snug, tight, and then do a final torque on them. So to try to break it down, to try to apply the pressure evenly. So I think this was our issue, was this backing plate here. Uh, the wheel looks good here, nice billet wheel. It says on the back the GT4088R 63.5 by 88. Um, a, it's an 11 blade design. So the billet wheels look pretty cool, I think. Uh, you know, yeah, there's cast, it doesn't look that much different, but I do think the extended tips look cool. Um, and I think they work well, at least they did in my um, 03 turbo over there. I don't know if anyone's noticed, I had a billet wheel on that. Um, and I'll probably eventually throw a billet wheel on my Power Max too when I get around to it. But anyway, guys, I'll be back to you shortly. So now, <clears throat> I know that all that is torqued down correctly. So I'm going to, I know that all of, well, I know that all of those bolts are torqued down now. So one thing here, these are reverse threads. 
So going to the right is not going to tighten it down. Going to the left, hopefully that's coming up as it's now, now it's stopped because it's spinning the turbine shaft. So I'm gonna hold onto the turbine shaft while I tighten this down the Okay guys, I do not have this thing uh, bolted down. Uh, I will get that, but what I wanna show you guys is this is spinning freely in here. Uh, no issues, no shaft play. Looks good there. Um, I believe I have this fixed now. Um, what I, I'm pretty sure it was that. I'm lucky in the sense of it didn't, it doesn't appear to have caused any damage. Um, this could have been a, a big ordeal for this turbo. So please, please, please be careful. I will have a follow-up video, guys. I will show you Greg's truck, though, and it is torn apart, so it could be another week. Um, I'm not 100% sure when he will have his truck together, but I am 90% sure I just fixed this turbo, which would be awesome because it's kind of cool that literally I assembled this piece by piece. Um, I don't know, I think that's kind of neat that I I bought what I wanted, what I needed, and then put it all together, and it's, and it's if it works anyway. And I was having issues, it seemed to be kind of stuck or something and then all of a sudden it would this would take off and it would launch my truck like a rocket but it would only build about 24 psi of boost however um that's still more than th uh, 30 psi of boost coming from the stock charger so because it's a larger wheel and everything it was able to move it was moving more air still but anyway um, when it would hit that 24 PSI, oh my God, it would send me flying. It was kind of cool, really. But anyway, um, I'm going to turn this over, get the bolts in, show you guys how I do that. Okay, guys, I want to show you how um, I'm... I now have this turbo back together. Here's the brackets on the back all the way around. Everything's all tightened up. And what I wanted to do before I did this, especially because it's going on someone else's truck, I don't want to inconvenience Greg anymore. Uh, this is my setup I have uh, for air. Uh, air compressors obviously over there. Got a ridiculously long cord for no reason. I got this cheap fitting. And I also got this guy here. So basically this is uh, has an adapter plate that goes to four inches, which is the diameter for um, the intake side of the compressor cover. I push this on here really well. So I push that on there, and then I have to hold this down. So I have to hold this on, and I will get a slight leak around here, but I hold that on, I hit it with just a little bit of air, and I'm feeling for leaks. So now, the only reason I'm doing this outside of a truck, because ideally you'd have this in the truck, that way you wouldn't have to attempt to seal it off here with your own hand, um, is because it is going on the truck and I don't feel anything around the backing plate, it all seems to be with this cap. You know, if I hold it down tight. Um, it reacts one way, and then if I let it up, it does another, so... Hmm. So yeah, all the air seems to be trying to just escape here, nowhere else. I think we're set up good here, guys. I'm gonna get this over to Greg. I gotta yeah, put my VGT solenoid back in to get this bolt in here, it was in the way. So put the VGT solenoid back in and we're gonna go from there, guys. Thank you. Guys, here in Pennsylvania, the weather doesn't know what to do. Do you see this? Is this coming up on camera? There's snow. It is snowing out here. This is ridiculous. Anyway, let's head back into the garage. Uh, show you guys what I have going on here. Okay, so One thing about this is you need to be careful about how much you tighten these bolts. They do strip I have found that out and I had to slightly jerry-rig something 
But now I did check this, as you guys should have just seen, uh, to attempt to the best of my ability at home. It does not appear to be leaking, so that's good. Now, <clears throat> the question that's been on everybody's mind is, do I recommend this product? At this time, I cannot say 100% that I recommend it. Mainly because, um, one, it was prepared incorrectly prior to getting to me. So that kind of leaves an initial bad taste in my mouth. Now, he has responded, and I'm going to still talk to him a little bit about this because this took a fair amount of work in figuring out, for me, this was not a slap it on. This was not a slap it on and go have a great time kind of turbo. In fact, on because of this, I had to turn around and buy a Power Max to be able to drive my truck and not have to mess with this in the time being. I gotta tell you, spending roughly twelve thirteen hundred dollars on a turbo to then turn around and take this one off for the second time and put a new one back in kind of makes me mad now uh i will say again this was one of the first ones of his i bought so he was probably still in a learning curve there is another company called 86 industries that offers the same race cover so i know this works and obviously kc turbo offers a similar race cover as well so I will say this, do I think this is a bad bad idea? No. I do think you need to be pretty mechanically inclined and have access to be able to machine the part or bench, I mean, I don't wanna say using a bench grinder is machining a part, it's not. But I was able to make this work, I believe. Greg has got nice enough to test that out for me because I gotta tell you, I'm just tired of tearing my turbo in and out non-stop. So, We'll see what happens. I'm very excited to see how this does. Um, I don't know, I think Greg's goal is to have his truck running by the weekend. On that note, guys, I'm going to finish cleaning up the garage again after, my, after I spent a ton of time in here cleaning it up. I am gonna clean up my little bit of a mess. I am now down to one turbocharger in my garage, which is very, very nice because they take up too much room. Uh, and let's not forget, I still have more stuff for the truck. I have more stuff up in my room. Uh, we are coming down to some of the final mods uh, that I have. I got a whole bunch of stuff though. This bracket here, that's for my drive shaft. We have new badges in there. We still have some fun stuff coming guys, so don't worry. I don't know if you guys know what that box over there was. That was the Raptor grill. I have a lot of stuff coming for the truck, so please stay tuned. We're going to have a blast. On April 29th, I will be racing at Cecil County Dragway at the YouTube call-out event. No, not because I got called out, but because I purchased one of their tickets to, for five runs down the track. Uh, very, very excited about that. I hope I get to race a truck, uh, at least one of those. It would kind of suck to end up racing Mike's uh, Z06 or ZR1 or McLaren. Um, and just get destroyed, not even have a fighting chance. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna get end of this vlog. Don't forget to check out some of our merchandise over at our Facebook page, Six Point Obros, exactly how it is spelled here. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram as well. The only difference is after the O, we have an H in there because someone else already took Six Obros. Anyway. So go check us out on those platforms, guys, as well. Leave us a like, follow us there, and we hope you have a great day. I'll see you soon.